I greet you and welcome you in the name of Christ who gathers us here this day and gathers us together wherever we are, online and together. I'm thankful that enhancing our music again today is Mr. Niska. Thank you, Kennedy, for being here. And uh, the one who played Abide With Me has been abiding with me for a long time. It's my sister. You might recognize Ruth Blum listed there. I'm thankful so much that she's now uh, retired, although I pulled her out of retirement to come and, and help us here for worship, and she'll be here uh, coming forward. So today I'm introducing her. She happened to drag along my brother, who will just sit innocently over here, um, but Dave is supervising everything that's going on. So a special welcome to them. Thank you, and thanks be to God. Our call committee is continuing to do its wonderful work, and they have some interviews coming up, and uh, progress is just being made. I want you to know that and have confidence in their good work. Uh, with that, I'd like to invite us to turn to a worship now, and we'll begin with our brief order for confession and forgiveness. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are inactive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Our gathering song this morning is Gather Us In, in the ELW on page 532 if you're checking in at home. Now is the kingdom and now is 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You'll find the prayer of the day printed on your insert. Would you pray with me? O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the 8th chapter of Acts, beginning with the 26th verse. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south in the road, on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb silent before its shearer, he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azadus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Here ends the first reading. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of God shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to, all who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to the people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. And then the second reading is from 1 John chapter 4, beginning with the seventh verse. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. 
God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his, script, of his spirit. As we, as we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as a Savior of the world, God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandments we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Here ends the second reading. Our gospel acclamation is found in your insert, Lord, let my heart be good soil. gospel on this fifth Sunday of Easter is taken from the 15th chapter of John, beginning with the first verse. And this happens on the night of Jesus' arrest, when he is telling his disciples about the relationship that they are to have with him. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, 
and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The word of our Lord. Ponder anew what God is doing, where God is leading, how God is calling. Ponder anew God's vision arising. Wonder, ponder, all things made new. That's been our prayer and our focus as the call committee began and got formed. And now when they're working, they're diligently serving prayerfully with our support. We're wondering, pondering about who this new pastor might be. And what will that pastor be like? Some of you right away will say, well, I hope this pastor knows how to shave anyway and doesn't come with a beard. I not and maybe this pastor will know how to dress and come in the appropriate robes and all the rest. That's, and maybe this pastor will stand up in the pulpit where it belongs and have notes just like Reedy and Clark so they know what they're talking about instead of talking out of his head. That would be good. And maybe it would be not a he but a she. Oh, now that would be a change for all the... We concentrate and think and talk and wonder about who the pastor might be. This Sunday, our scriptures really come and ask the question for us, who will we be? Who will we be as individuals and as a church? Who will we be? What will we be? They say, well, I'm not so sure I knew what it was before COVID, and then all this time and all the frustration of wishing that COVID would be over, then we could get back to normal, whatever normal is. Normal is a setting on a dryer. What is normal and what will be the new? Maybe it's time to ponder anew what God is doing within us. And ask the question, what will we be? Now, normal would often be in a new call for a pastor, people will sit back and kind of, well, let's see, did I like that or not? And then I go home and I have roast pastor for lunch. That's the norm. <laughs> Maybe as a church and as a community of faith, we might say, well, who are we going to be together with this partner and become Breck Lutheran. Maybe in a new kind of way. You say, well, it's going to be a tough enough just to get back to normal. COVID has really thrown us. This isn't the first time in history the church has been thrown through a disaster or something that has been challenging. Maybe we take a look at the scriptures that we have for today and ask the question, who will we be? For the scriptures today certainly are asking and telling us. I am the vine. You are the branches. And the branches bear much fruit based on the vine. That's what branches do. And he says... I am the vine, you are the branches, those who abide in me, and I in them bear much fruit. The kind of fruit that abides. So what's the fruit, and who's the vine? The other reading actually d defines that very well by simply saying, the vine, God, is love. One of the shortest, clearest passages of scripture, God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that God has loved us. And sent his Son to be the means by which our sins are forgiven. Dear friends, if God so loved us, 
in this way, we certainly ought to love one another. How about that? For saying that's who we are as the branch onto the vine. What if people looked at Breck Lutheran and said, wow, that's a place that really loves. To become a prayer-filled, care-filled congregation that loves. It isn't just attending to, well, what is the pastor like over there? Maybe what is the church like? Who are we? It illustrates just a few examples of congregations that have gone through some tough times. And they came out and they became something maybe different. Grace Lutheran Church. Before Katrina hit them, they were a congregation that loved to really debate with one another about their preferences. What time shall we have worship? I think we should have two services. I think we should have one that's contemporary. No, we should have one that's traditional. Let's try to... And on and on they went. Does that sound at all familiar like any church you've ever heard of? And that was the character of their church. And they were declining. Sunday school was down to nothing. Then came Katrina and threw everything out, including the pipe organ, which was destroyed. Nine months later, finally getting back in, they made a decision. They would become service-focused. Just as those who had come and served them so they could have a chance at a new day, they began to be a congregation filled with service as first and foremost. And guess what? People joined them, and they began to grow. And now, these many years later, two of the kids that were in high school at the time are both graduating from seminary. Or how about another congregation? The men's Bible studies meeting, and they finally just kind of got tired of talking about God's love. The pastor... A friend of mine had just left to take another call. They were in an interim time. And this group of Bible study guys said, you know what, let's do something. How about, you know, I've heard about wells being dug over in Ethiopia. Let's maybe take that on. Let's try that. Okay, how much is that? It's $5,000 to do that. Let's ask the kids in the Sunday school to join us 90 days later. With the kids, they had 12 wells. Because they reached out with God's love and did something as a congregation, even in an interim without a pastor. Ten years later, we have now done a thousand wells. It's been my privilege to partner with them. They decided to be a care-filled, prayer-filled congregation that extended and reached and said, we are going to serve. And today, in this first reading, you might have noticed, maybe not, but I noticed right away because it talks about a guy named Philip. <laughs> Our father, like a lot of pastors, you know, named his kids after scripture names. That's because we were always misbehaving. And then from the front, he could say, Philip, according to Philip in the scriptures, Philip. Of course, I'm not going to say anything about my brother. His name is David. <laughs> Ruth was perfect, so she never had to say that. But, but you get that Philip, and I immediately take notice that it's about the Ethiopian and a long sermon could be talked about. This Ethiopian was basically an outcast. And in search of any kind of meaning. Had gone all the way to Jerusalem. Out of Ethiopia. In order to find that meaning in that God. And he's searching. And he's reading scripture. And as he's traveling along. Philip comes alongside and says. Do you understand what you're reading? And he says no. I need some help, somebody to share with me. And they talk about it, and 
the Ethiopian asks an absolutely absurd question, inappropriate at the time because he did not belong and would not belong. He said, what prevents me from being baptized? And Philip immediately with the gospel of God says, let's indeed baptize you into this family of grace. This God is intended for you. Christ came for you. And the Ethiopian church is one we might pay attention to for how they have loved and bear fruit from the vine. Talk about disasters and what they've been through. At the time the ELCA began, we were five million members. At that time, the Ethiopian church was about a million members. Now, we have declined, along with almost every major denomination in the United States, from five million to 3.3 million. During that same period of time, the Ethiopian church went from 1 million to 11 million. It's one of the fastest growing churches in the world, and it's Lutheran. Ha! Huh. When they took their name, they did not want to take the name of Ethiopia in their name. They reluctantly added it on the end. They took the name of the place where they began in a place, a house, and in the Ethiopian Amharic, it's Makana. Makana Yesu. That's who we are. We are the place, the house of Jesus. Makana Yesu is the name of their church. Makana Yesu. And it's now 11 million strong and growing. What is going on? They must have life good there. They don't. King Haile Selassie was doubtful about them, but they took on as their mantle, as their mission, that we will care for our people, all people. And they extend that care through everything that they do. They feed and they educate and they bring medical care whenever they can, even in low capacity, when they're starving. They make sure they share their bread. And in that, through every governmental change, from Haile Selassie, when the communists took over, they ran out every other church except the Mekeneyesu. Because if they ran out the Mekeneyesu, they knew that the entire nation would revolt because they saw how the Mekeneyesu loved them. And they continued to grow. When I was there, I learned a name, a word that I can't forget. It's the most wonderful word. It drives me crazy, actually. Ha! Tanayastaline. When you greet somebody, you say, Tanayastaline. You know what it means? It means, how are you? We say it to each other all the time. How you doing? And we're lucky if we get a, oh, okay, fine. And we'll move on. That's not what you do in Ethiopia. Tanayastilene could be interpreted as, how is your weather? How is your atmosphere? How is your whole of life? How is your family? How is your loved ones? How is your work? How is everything? It is holistic. It is entire. And when you get done with your conversation, it is salem. The peace of God be with you. The peace, the wholeness of God. The reason it drives me crazy is I'm always on the time. And they don't, they just take the time to tenaiestily, to care and to share and to take the time. Their coffee ceremony is this ritual it takes forever. And as an American, just it drives me nuts. Makaneesu. One of the fastest growing churches in the world, and it's Lutheran. And they love. That is what we are called upon in our gospel. What are we going to be as a community of faith? We'll have a new pastor someday, one day. It's going to be different, probably not going to sing during the sermons. Whoever does that anyway. 
But who will you be? As the community of faith, who will you be? Ponder anew what God is doing, where God is leading. You, community of faith, Breck Lutheran, Makana Yesu, place of Jesus. There's a song that I would like to share that kind of wraps this up that says about the love that we have and the light that comes to us. This song says that this is, you are not the source and neither am I. There's a light that lights the darkness of life and it comes from God's creation. There's a love that flows within us. It is a love of God's creation. The world cannot create it and the world cannot negate it. It is the love of God. And that is the vine. That is the vine of which we are the branches. That we can have that love shine like the sun just as those in our past who have been saints for us. It's our turn to be saints and shine like the sun. There's a light that lights the darkness and the world cannot contain it and the world cannot explain it it is the light of god's creation there's a love that flows within us and the world cannot create it and the world cannot negate it it is the love of God's salvation and it shines like the sun. There are saints who light the darkness and the world cannot contain them for the love of God sustains them and they will never be forgotten. We are blessed to have them with us, and we praise the God who made them. There is no way to repay them, and so we simply do applaud them as they shine like the sun. Glory be to our Creator, glory to the Holy One, glory be to Christ our Savior, the Lord of light, the King of love. See Him shine like the sun. A light that lights the darkness, and the world cannot contain it, and the world cannot explain it. It is the light of God's creation. There's a love that flows within us, and the world cannot create it. And the world cannot negate it. It is the love of God's salvation. And it shines like the sun. Glory be to our Creator. Glory to the Holy One. Glory be to Christ our Savior. and this love go before you to guide you, behind you to encourage you, above you to watch over you, beneath you to support you, beside you to be your friend, and within you to fill you with his light, his love, and with his peace. 
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join together in singing that beautiful hymn, Abide With Me, Abide With Me. Let us confess together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray together the prayers of intercession. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. 
God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. You have created the heavens and the earth as we wonder at the beauty of creation. May we seek vital connections among all that depend on the earth for life. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence, that they lead not by fear, but with love for those they are called to serve. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love, those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide, provide for the needs of all. We especially remember Kenzie Christensen, Paul Sanis, Lane Helgeson, and others we name in our hearts. Hear us, O, Lord, o God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. We also continue to pray for the council and call committee as they make decisions for the future of Breckenridge Lutheran. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. You gather us with all the saints by the power of your spirit. With them, may our hearts forever be in your keeping. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. continue our worship with communion and we will do communion today a little uniquely and I think very specially you have your communion elements with you if not one of the ushers can quickly bring them to you and you will be receiving and taking them where you are there's something very special about doing it that way many congregations many denominations believe that the body of Christ is actually present in the body of Christ, actually in the community. And that, I think, is enormously special, and we do that today. I will direct you as we receive the elements together, together as the body of Christ. We'll share the words of institution. The night of his betrayal, our Lord took bread. He blessed it as he broke it, and then he said, My body broken for you is what this means. Remember now, my children, what you have seen. And then he took the chalice and raised it high. My blood is given for you, a full supply, a covenant, a promise, a cleansing stream. Remember now, my children, what you have seen. We share this food together, remembering Christ. We share a common treasure and know the price. We share it without measure, a gift of love. We share our life forever with God above. Together we'll share our Lord's Prayer. And something, because we are doing this in communion with the body of Christ together, I note that the Lord's Prayer does not start with my Father, but our Father. So we will pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So together now we will, as children of God, we will receive the elements by opening it up and taking the bread. The body of Christ given for you. Take and eat together. Then we take the cup. Together, the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you. And together as a community of faith, may indeed you be blessed to be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Children of God, and so in fact, we are. Continue with our announcements. Our radio broadcast this morning is sponsored by Mike and Diane Belseth in memory of loved ones. And we thank Mike and Diane for their continued support of our radio ministry. One um, announcement that is not in your bulletin this morning um, comes from Shannon Wendorf, who is pharmacist over at Wapiton Drug. And they have COVID uh, Johnson and Johnson vaccination shots available. Uh, the vaccine uh, for those 18 and over. And all you need to do is call 701-642-9211 and set up an appointment. That is 701-642-9211 at Wapiton Drug. And they will take care of you over there. Um, we have a blood drive coming up on May 26th um, at Breck Lutheran, and you can contact Mary Ann Conrad to sign up for it. It will run from noon until 6, uh, May 26th. Um, there's a note in your bulletin also. Um, just if you, if you are on the Carrying Bridge site, Kenzie Christensen had her bone marrow transplant last Thursday afternoon. It went well. Um, so she'll be recovering down at Mayo for six weeks. Please keep her in your prayers. And there's also a site that if you want to send her a card, um, this young lady is uh, so inspirational. And uh, I hope that you will keep her in your prayers. Um, there's a note about online giving, if uh, you would consider that. Um, and there are also plans being made for Vacation Bible School in 2021. There work, we're working with Bethel over in, in Wapiton. It will be from June 7th through the 10th, Monday through Thursday, from 4.45 to 7.30. A light supper will be served at 4.45 till 5.30, and then camp will start at 5.30. So, it goes from preschoolers to those students who are just finishing the fifth grade. And you can contact Brie Allison uh, by May 9th because they're in need of some volunteers. Uh, there are many ways it says you can help. To man some stations, to get the kids from one station to the next, or to help serve meals. There's a meeting coming up on May 9th at 645 at Bethel and more information will be coming at a later date on how to sign up. So we're excited to gather our youth again to spread God's love and to share it. And we also thank your support uh, for our local food pantry. In addition to what was giving individually, there was $160 um, given 
and 20 pounds of food was collected. And so we thank Cindy Van Tassel for her work on this monthly mission for the month of April. These are the announcements that I have for this morning. As we conclude our worship and depart, wherever we are into our work, into our day, let us go with God's blessing. And think of Kenzie as I visited down in Mayo Clinic. Indeed, the blessing for her. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join together. Come, live in the light. We are called. Let's sing together. Depart in peace to serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.